congratulations fellows you did it it wasn't easy we had to do it all virtually here we are welcome to the new world but y'all rocked it okay i can't believe we're at the end of the first year of our fellowship you all have been amazing you have persevered and explored and tried new things over these past eight months. Well, as you all know, this was a brand new program for us. So there were a ton of unknowns. Um, you know, obviously we had incredible volunteers and our TBL team, especially once Michaela came in. Um, but it wasn't until I think, you know, all of you found the program um, and, and you were hired that I, you know, really knew it would work out. I knew that we made the right choice and knew that, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be a success. My name is Denasia Hamilton. I am Pasha Lee. So my name is Fian. My name is Jordan Odagwe. My name is Rihanna Abram. I'm Zion Edwards. I am a recent strategic communications graduate. I majored in political science and strategic communications at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. I graduated spring 2021 with a degree in strategic communication. I majored in marketing and minored in Chinese. I um, graduated from the University of Minnesota with a bachelor degree in strategic communications and a minor in digital media studies. I graduated from the University of St. Thomas with a marketing degree and a peace studies minor. I am a graphic communications major and I just graduated from the University of Minnesota this past May and I studied marketing, business analytics, and interdisciplinary design and I am a management fellow. I was a management fellow and I'm also a management fellow. And I am part of the management track. I'm on the management marketing track. And I am a creative fellow. And I'm on the creative track during the Brand Lab Fellowship. Throughout the fellowship in the past seven, eight months, what did you find out about yourself? I can definitely see a huge shift in my confidence and my comfortability in terms of like, my career and knowing that what knowing what I am capable of and learning um, the materials that are given to me and also knowing that I can do the work that I thought I couldn't do from the jump. I know going through the job process and the job applications when reading the description, I'm not like turned away from it because I know given the material, given the like there will be people that are out there to help me and learn and grow and i always remind myself of that but at the same time knowing the experience i have now i know not to downplay myself i definitely found out that i have a lot of control over my career and my future and that i don't have to fit into a box as either a creative or a management professional i would say i found out more about my strengths and my weaknesses especially when working with like mentors and teammates and um, supervisors during the feedback session. I found out a lot of things about my career interests, how I approach my projects, how I handle conflicts, and more so of who I am as a person. Um, one thing that I found out about myself right away was when I was at Best Buy working on their video production team. I have always thought of myself to be a pretty independent worker but i fell in love with collaboration i found out that i can't work remotely at home like i'm definitely a really social person and i think this program kind of cemented that i work best in environments um, surrounded by a lot of people in person but i i definitely learned a lot about time management and still like how to make those meaningful connections even in a remote space um i think throughout this fellowship i learned a lot about um, how I can use my talents in the broader creative world. Um, you know, in college, I focused a lot on just graphic design, but um, there's so many different ways I can use those skills. I'm super indecisive by nature, and I've always liked to do a little bit of everything. Um, so I've always balanced like doing research, strategy work, and creative work while I was in college and just kind of like in my professional work. Um, but the fellowship made it clear to me that I don't want to do that. Um, 
I like to be a part of ideation and like early campaign development, but I don't want a job in research. I don't want a job in strategy. How do you think your upbringing and identity affect how you show up in the workplace? I feel like expectations are definitely different. Um, for me, growing up in like a Black household, identifying as a Black woman, but also having parents who were or are immigrants, I feel like a lot of BIPOC individuals can identify with that as well. No matter what the status is in terms of like immigrant or not, but knowing that like pressure of I need to do well so I can take care of others that are important to me because they gave me a good life. My, I feel like my upbringing affects how I show up more in the workplace versus my identity. So I'm a proud Asian American woman. My upbringing, on the other hand, it makes it hard for me to be confident at work. And most Asian households were taught to respect our elders. And I noticed that when I disagree with an older person at work, it's harder for me to speak my truth. It's even hard for me to handle a conversation with them. I grew up in a more like matriarchal family dynamic. And so when I was growing up, like the women led the household. Um, and so I've always kind of had this hyper independence and idea and mindset that, you know, I can do things on my own, like I can do them well, I can succeed on my own. I felt kind of overwhelmed sometimes, like, oh, I shouldn't ask for help or I shouldn't need to ask for help. You know, I should already have it all together. I should already know how to do these things. If I don't know how to do these things, I need to teach myself, like it's not anyone else's responsibility. Um, and I would say also like, I always grew up in like a multicultural um, family and environment and community. And so that's definitely something that I look for when I enter spaces, especially in my career. A lot of organizations talk about diversity, but are they actually acting on it um, and implementing it and making it a safe space for people who look like me or are underrepresented um, in the industry? So I have, uh... I grew up with both my mom and dad, and they are both in director roles. I definitely think that I was brought up with this mindset of like how important leadership is and how it's kind of been ingrained for me from the start, you know, never to be a follower. But I definitely think that shows up in the workplace specifically, um, just making sure to lead by example. You, you can show leadership in other ways besides just being in a position of leadership. So just being on time, making sure I'm doing my work thoroughly and just definitely just leading by example. And full transparency, I feel like it kind of messes with my confidence a bit. Um, and that kind of alters how I handle situations. Um, I'm black, I'm a woman, and both of my parents are immigrants. So I just come from communities where people are often silenced or just ignored. And um, being in a state and a workforce where most people don't really look like me, um, I kind of find that some people just don't want to hear me. And so I, I was always taught that I should stand up for myself and my beliefs no matter what support I have or don't. And that kind of makes me more likely to be extra vocal. Like I'm extra firm on my perspectives and I make sure to volunteer my ideas in meetings because I feel like people wouldn't necessarily ask me my perspective if I didn't if I didn't say it myself. I feel like my upbringing and identity greatly affect how I show up in the workplace. I come from a lower middle class, single parent home, and I'm a first generation college student. So at times it was hard because I wasn't afforded certain luxuries. Sometimes I felt like I didn't have the resources that I needed to truly succeed or at times I felt like I was just playing catch up. Um, I'm also a young black woman in America, so the odds are already stacked against me based on that alone. I feel like regardless of how I present myself or show up in the world, my race will always play a factor. And there are already tons of stereotypes associated with being black, but also just being a black woman that I have to be mindful of. Um, just being afraid to speak up or advocate for myself based on I might be perceived or I was being worried about how I might come off to people if I don't react in a way they deem appropriate or just being concerned about how my hair looks and if it's professional. Have there been moments when you felt the imposter syndrome and how did you navigate it? 
I don't think I feel it every single day, but there are days where I'm just like, oh my God, I don't think I'm capable of doing this or I don't feel like I'm deserving of this. But there are other days that pass by where I'm just like, I worked hard for this. I do deserve this. But I always remind myself everybody started somewhere. Like these people that have been here for eight plus years, they at some point were in my boat. So for me, the imposter syndrome comes and goes depending on the environment that I'm in. When I do feel it, I remind myself that I actually got to a place where I can compare to compete. And I also saw a post on Facebook one day. It said, is it imposter syndrome or are you the only person of color in the room? Ever since then, I accepted that it's something I have to persevere through given my identity. It switched my mindset from this is uncomfortable to I'm opening doors for other BIPOC brothers and sisters. I want their paths to be less bumpy and this is something I want to do. I think for me, I've definitely felt imposter syndrome. I think especially in larger teams where I'm like the only junior level or person that's newer to the team because I feel like in those situations I have like pressure on myself to like overperform but then I have to kind of take a step back and realize you know these people have like 10 years in the industry. I think I've navigated it by just accepting that I'll probably never feel like a real writer and like most people I'll never feel like I'm doing enough or I know enough, but that's kind of the beauty of the work is that you're always learning on the job and you're always going to be stepping into new environments where you're going to be a novice and you're going to have to learn. And regardless of whether I feel like I'm the most esteemed writer in the room, writing is what I want to do and it's what I've been doing. So I'm going to continue to put myself out there and just try to get more experience and the confidence is just going to have to come later. In what ways did you need to advocate for yourself? I would definitely say um, asking for exposure in places and um, roles that I was interested in. Once I realized what I wanted to do and I asked, you know, to be connected with those people, it was it became easier and easier as the rotations went by. Just being vocal and communicating my needs really helped with advocating for myself. During the fellowship, there was a conflict I had with another person and I wanted to confront her about it. I was worried on my end that I might stutter, look like I lacked confidence or somehow shame the other person. And I spoke to a supervisor that I trust and I practiced with her. My approach is to tell her my story and then ask her questions. And when she responded, I then saw her side of the story and that made sense. And the problem was resolved. And it felt good to speak up for myself and to release the anger that came along with the conflict. What were your favorite projects? I would say one of my favorite ones was at Wonderman Thompson. They gave my cohort an RFP project to work on and um, it was for Best Buy Essentials. And so we had like six weeks to create a strategy for it, to um, come up with creative concepts for it, design it, and then at the end we presented it to like 50 people. Personally, my favorite projects were at Optum. Uh, there I was conducting the consumer persona for health equity initiatives, and I enjoyed having conversation with others and hearing their perspectives on who it may be. And I remember I had a strong opinion on a certain persona that we should target. And I received pushbacks from some of the higher ups. And I liked how real the process felt. I liked how it wasn't so like happy and sugar-coated like it felt like the real world and I also felt integrated in the team I was able to get out there and explore within and outside of the team it was 
just a fun exploration of time. I think um, during my first rotation, I was with Essence and I got to work with Airbnb and they had me work on a weekly newsletter um, and that was filled with news about Airbnb, their competitors and just different things that were going on with, within the travel industry. And I, ha I got to send that out to my team each week to keep them informed. And I really enjoyed that because I do really enjoy travel. And so I was able to learn a lot about what was going on during that time. And it was just really nice to have a consistent piece of work that I could do every week and my team really enjoyed reading that and so I, I really appreciated being able to do that. I think some of my number one favorite project was um, during Best Buy I would say and I got to work on this studio um, like exterior signage project. It was um, like almost like a mural that was going inside one of their new studios so um, the directors and staff would be able to see it when they um, came into the studio. What are some meaningful conversations you have had with your mentors and other professionals in your network? With my mentors, I've had very personal conversations, conversations about like salary and how to budget and how to negotiate. I asked my mentor, should I go into nonprofit, corporate or agency? I'm not sure which to focus on. I don't want to mess up. And she asked me, where does this want to make the right decision stem from? And this question made me realize who I am, me always wanting to be right and how bad that is and how I let unnecessary expectations negatively influence me. I think the most meaningful conversation I've had was um, while looking over my resume with my mentor, I think um, she gave me a lot of feedback, but I think the biggest feedback is um, I was underselling, I guess you could say myself, in, in the resume. Um, I had a really awesome conversation with my supervisor from Essence. Like, she was really honest with me, and I asked her a lot of questions about the role and just like her experience. Like, I really look up to her because she's an Asian woman within advertising. And I feel like, you know, throughout this program, I honestly didn't see a lot of people who look like me. So, to be able to see her in that position was really meaningful. And she just gave me honest and genuine advice, which is all I wanted. And that has really made a difference. And to know that there's people out there that will really advocate for you it makes me like very hopeful and very excited for the future. One of the most important conversations I had with my mentor is just how to beat imposter syndrome and when do you feel like you're a real writer like what do I do to feel like I've done it and I can just be confident and he made it very clear to me that that just never happens. He has been writing since he was 16 and he's almost 40 and he still feels like he doesn't know what he's doing all the time he still feels like why are you asking me I don't know eventually the work that you do will speak for itself regardless of whether you feel like you're an imposter or you feel like a real writer what kind of growth have you seen in the fellows I saw just a growth in leadership um, amongst these fellows. They were definitely um, self-starters and uh, you were able to see just how um, their business acumen grew. Watching you grow over this time from inquisitive young learners into these industry professionals has been incredible. The biggest thing that I feel like, even though I wasn't with you every single day that I saw and heard was your confidence grow, your confidence in um, stepping into new spaces, into trying new things, into meeting new people. It's been such a privilege to just walk alongside you and get to know you a little better. I'm really impressed by who, how you all adapted to all the challenges and opportunities that came your way. You have navigated four very different workplaces, met so many different people, learned how to work in the virtual and hybrid environments, uh, and also had projects and assignments changed or canceled at the last minute. In other words, you've really experienced what it's like to work in this industry today. It was really nice to have some of the um, fellows that I work with sort of uh, really help me see outside of my own realm. And then from a company perspective, um, just the need to be a little more interconnected, um, not always a negative, but 
definitely something that I, I picked up on during um, the work with the fellows and just how um, beneficial it is to have that fresh perspective from a different generation and from um, folks that are, um, you know, starting their careers. Two things. I love working with young people and I love knowledge sharing. I feel fulfilled when I'm able to share with others and help them along in some way. Well, I would have to say it's definitely the fellows. Every fellow made me smile. Getting to know the fellows was the best part of the program to me. To stay authentic. Like the one thing I got from these fellows was that they showed up as who they were and were not painting any fronts. Um, there was no desire to overly compensate for things that they thought they might have lacked or otherwise there was a strong confidence in most of these fellows from the very get and I think that is beautiful and they should continue carrying that forward. Remember to continue to network and grow you know, the folks that you have in your corner so you're able to grow your skills and your expertise and your experience so you can try all these new things and really step in confidently to say that you can do that. Trust yourself, trust your gut. I would say ask questions. Don't ever be afraid to ask a question. Even if nobody else is asking a question, be the one because chances are the person right next to you has that exact same question. The biggest thing that I hope for is that you will continue to be curious. Curious about different roles, about trying different experiences, about looking at different ways of thinking. That curiosity is going to continue to take you to new levels and to help each of you realize all the goals that you have for yourself. I think the biggest thing would just be to trust yourselves. Um, it's taking you this far, you know, and really lean into kind of the open-mindedness um, and what could be, you know, as far as your futures. Um, I'd say definitely lean into your networks, new and old, uh, and please, please, please stay in touch with us. Uh, we love you. We're excited for you. As you continue on this journey, I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. First, please stay true to who you are and what you stand for. It's so, so important these days. Uh, but at the same time, pick your battles wisely because not every issue is worth your time and your energy. I want you to be proud of the skills that you've built, the knowledge that you possess, and the experiences that you've had, even if it doesn't feel like much today.